the great poet. Are you still writing, Barney? Hell, I write all the time. Don't your fans interrupt your work? Oh, hell, sometimes the women find me, but they don't stay long. Are your books selling? I get royalty checks. What is your advice to young writers? Drink, fuck, and smoke plenty of cigarettes. What is your advice to older writers? If you're still alive, you don't need any advice. What is the impulse that makes you create a poem? What makes you take a shit? What do you think of Reagan and unemployment? I don't think of Reagan or unemployment. It all bores me, like space flights and the Super Bowl. What are your concerns then? Modern women. Modern women? They don't know how to dress. Their shoes are dreadful. What do you think of women's liberation? Anytime they're willing to work the car washes, get behind the plow, chase down the two guys who just held up the liquor store or clean up the sewers, anytime they're ready to get their tits shut off in the army, I'm ready to stay home and wash the dishes and get bored picking lint off the rug. But isn't there some logic in their demands? Of course. Stockman poured another drink. He even drank it from the glass, part of the wine dribbled down his chin and onto his shirt. He had the body odor of a man who hadn't bathed in months. My wife, he said. I'm still in love with my wife. Hand me that phone, will you? I handed the phone to him. He dialed the number. Claire? Hello, Claire? He put the receiver down. What happened, I asked. The usual. She hung up. Listen, let's get out of here. Let's go out to a bar. I've been in this damn room too long. I need to get out. But it's raining. It's been raining for a week. The streets are flooded. I don't care. I want to get out. She's probably fucking some guy right now. She's probably got her high heels on. I always made her leave her high heels on. I helped Bernard Stockman get into an old brown overcoat. All the buttons were missing off the front. It was stiff with grime. It was hardly an L.A. overcoat. It was heavy and clumsy. It must have come from Chicago or Denver in the 30s. And we got his crutches and we climbed painfully down the YMCA stairway. Bernard had a fit of muscatel in one of the pockets. We reached the entrance and Bernard assured me he could make it across the side walking into the car. I was parked some distance from the curb. And as I ran to the other side to get in, I heard a shout and then a splash. It was raining and raining hard. I ran back around and Bernard had managed to fall and wedge himself in the gutter between the car and the curbing. The water swept around him. He was sitting up. The water rushed over him, ran down through his pants, lapped against his sides, the crutches floating sluggishly in his lap. It's all right, he said. Just drive on and leave me. Oh, hell, Barney. I mean it. Drive on. Leave me. My wife doesn't love me. She's not your wife, Barney. You're divorced. Tell that to the Marines. Come on, Barney. I'm going to help you up. No, no, it's all right. I assure you. Just go ahead. Get drunk without me. I picked him up, got the door open, and lifted him into the front seat. He was very, very wet. Streams of water ran across the floorboards. Then I ran and went around to the other side and got in. Barney unscrewed the cap of the bottle of Muscatel, took a hit, passed the bottle on me. I took a hit. Then I started the car and drove, looking out through the windshield into the rain for a bar that we might possibly enter and not vomit the first time we got the look and smell of the urinal. The Barfly Bukowski, L.A. Poet Laureate.